In this color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this beautiful earthy tone style wedding color grading effect to really bring out those browns and greens found in your photo just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. Now for this type of effect to work really well, I recommend applying it to more of a rural style photo. Photos that have got a lot of already earthy tones within, so we, that's really what we're going to be emphasizing. So photos with a lot of brown, a lot of greenery, maybe a forest, maybe even a woodland, something like that, but it also works well with urban style photos. So take the photo we're using as a sample today. It was a photo I recently took at a wedding in a, a, a basically an abandoned church. So we've got this beautiful beautiful red brick found in the background, which kind of brings more of that urban style feel, but you've also got that rural feel coming in with all of these kind of trees kind of integrating into the photo and it works really well. So have a go and experiment to see if this style of kind of color grading effect works well with your kind of workflow. So what we're gonna do is firstly open up the Lightroom Classic, then we're gonna go ahead over to the develop panel found on the right hand side. So what we're gonna do, go down to the basics panel first and we're gonna go ahead and open. Now I shot this in manual white balance and I'm working on a raw photo. So as you can see, my temperature and tint look like this accordingly. So I've shot it at 6,000 Kelvin with a tint of 15. Now we're gonna leave that as as shot. I quite like this warm tone, but you may need to warm or cool the photo depending on what white balance you were shooting. Now when we've got this profile here, what I recommend doing is changing it from Adobe Color, and then if you're working on a landscape photo, use that, or I'm in this particular example, I'm going to be using Adobe Portrait as we're working on some portrait uh, people in the photo. Then what we're gonna do is drop down to tone. And we're not gonna do much change here, but what we're gonna do firstly is gonna to go to our exposure here, and we're gonna drop that down by minus 10. Then, because the dresses are quite bright and there's not a lot of definition in the sky you can see here, we're gonna to go to the highlights here, and we're gonna drop that down by minus 30. And it's the same situation with the shadows. As you can see, his suit's got a lot of texture and a lot of detail, but it's hidden within these shadows here. So to fix that, we're gonna to go to the shadow section we can find here, and we'd go ahead and increase that by plus 35. Now, to make the photo not look too um, flat and gray, what we're gonna do is we're gonna boost the whites and darken the blacks. So what we're gonna do is add a, a pinch of contrast to the whites and blacks. We're gonna to go to the whites here, we're gonna increase that by 10, and then with the blacks, we're going to decrease that by 10. That will prevent clipping on both the highlights and or shadows. Now, with the texture clarity in dehaze, again, we're not gonna do much here. We're going to go to texture here. We're gonna increase that by 10. That'll bring in some nice texture found in the brickwork and also in the dress. And then in the clarity, because we're working on predominantly portrait photos and we're working with skin, as you can see here, I like softening that. So what we can do is go to the clarity here and we're gonna drop that down by minus 20 in this specific example. It's quite an extreme example. Don't always drop it down as this far, but it works well for this style of color grading. Then the last thing we do is we go to the vibrance here and we're gonna go ahead and increase that by five. A small amount might not seem like a big difference, but overall it'll create this real nice look. Okay, so once we've finished out of the basics panel, we're gonna drop that out of there and we're gonna to go to tone curve. Now, when you're in a tone curve, we're not gonna be using our parametric curve, we're going to be using our point curve. So make sure your point curve is selected. Now, what we want to do with inside the tone curve is create more of a matte effect in the shadows. We're also going to slightly reduce the contrast found within the highlights. So with this, you want to kind of select kind of in the middle of the highlights and midtones, so around about here. Then what you want to do is go all the way to the shadows. We're gonna also add another point. And what you want to do is bring the shadows down, so like so. And we also want to bring the highlights down as well. So we wanna bring the highlights down slightly further than the actual shadows. So we're going for a slightly depressed look here, found in the highlights, and then it's a little bit brighter found within the shadows. But what we're gonna do is go to the blacks, which is the point found on the far left-hand corner, and we're gonna go ahead and bring that up. So you've got the input of zero, which is true 100% black, and we've got the output here, we're going to increase that to 20. So we've got a nice matte effect found within the shadows and black areas, which really works well with this earthy tone when we start manipulating the colors a little bit further with HSL and also calibration. Now what we're gonna do is gonna go to the red channel. So this is all of our exposure, so all of the colors. 
We're gonna go to specifically our red channel here and we're gonna make a very small change. So make a point roughly in the middle, input value of 128, which is exactly in the middle. And then what we want to do is we're gonna increase the value to 134. Four. So we're going to go a very small increase in the amount of red found within the midtones. And we're going to do the same with the green. So again, we're going to make a small point in the middle. Make sure the input value is 128. That is absolutely bang smack in the middle. And we want to make sure our input value is larger. And we're going to go for the same number that we did last time, 134. So we're going to increase it a very, very small amount. And the last thing we're going to do is going to go to our blue channel here. And we're going to do this very similar, but we're going to do a slight opposite. So we're going to go for input value again of 128. So bang smack in the midtones. But this time, instead of increasing the value, we're going to decrease it. And we're going to go for 124. So we're decreasing it a very small amount. What this will do is it will bring a little bit more red, green and blue found within the photo. So in the reds, we're adding a small amount. In the greens, we're adding a small amount and we're actually reducing the amount of blue and we're adding in yellow because obviously blue is the opposite of yellow found within the color wheel. And that's all we're going to do with the tone curve. Now, it might not seem a big difference, but if we do the before, and after, you can see this earthy tone is already starting to take shape. And we've already done just a few different adjustments. So let's go ahead and move over to the HSL or hue, saturation and luminance sliders. Right, so all we're gonna do, turn off the tone curve here and we're gonna drop down to HSL. Now HSL controls your hue, it controls your saturation and it can also control your luminance. Basically all of the colors and it's split into different color bands. So we can target certain color bands accordingly. So let's go ahead and change hue first, which is the color of uh, basically the photo. And it's split from red all the way down to magenta. So what we're gonna do is miss out red because that's predominantly found in the brickwork. We don't wanna emphasize that too much. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to the orange here and we're gonna drop that down by minus five, a fairly small change. Now, to make the green a lot more powerful, a lot more punchy and a little bit more green as it were, we're gonna to go to the yellow here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase that by 30. And we're gonna do the same for the green. Make them a little bit more green, maybe add a little bit more blue into the green, make them a little bit more punchy. We're gonna do that, we're gonna increase that by 20. But that's all we're gonna do for the hue. We're gonna make a slight more different changes in the saturation. So in the saturation, because skin tones are predominantly found in red, orange, and yellow, we're not gonna change these mains accordingly, but we are gonna change yellow because that's predominantly found within a lot of the foliage that you can see in the photo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop that down by minus 30. Now for the green here, we're gonna do the same. We're gonna drop that down by minus 30. Now when it gets to the slightly cooler colors, because we don't wanna necessarily have them in the photo, but they still need to have a certain presence, like for instance, if they say you've got a blue sky, for example, we don't want to remove it, we just want to reduce it because what it will do is it will emphasize the other colors in the photo. So instead of making all the colors too much punchier, we're gonna darken some and brighten some others to really emphasize the ones that we want to. It's a really good color grading effect and something I recommend doing to all of your photos. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to aqua here, we're gonna drop that down by minus 60. Then the same with the blue, we're gonna drop that down by minus 60. Purple, we're also gonna do the same, minus 60 and then magenta minus 60. Now the reason we're going for quite an extreme change, we still want the colors there, we just want less of them to really bring out the warmer tones like the reds, orange, and yellows. And that's what I recommend for this particular tile color grading. And then the last thing we do is gonna go over to the luminance. We're gonna do something very similar. So with the reds, we're gonna bring up the brightness. So we're gonna bring that by 25. Then it's the same with the oranges. We're gonna increase that by 25, bringing up the brightness in the areas that we want the kind of viewer or looker of the image to actually go to first. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken the rest. So we're gonna to go to yellow, we're gonna darken that by 20. Green, we're gonna again do the same. We're gonna darken that by 40 instead, a little bit of a stronger effect. And you can see we're bringing kind of more interest to the center of the photo just by using the luminance sliders. Then we've got aqua, you can see here, we're gonna drop that down by minus 60. Then it's the same, we're gonna drop that down by minus 60 in the blue, and it's the same, minus 60 in the purple, and the last one, minus 60 in magenta. Now if I show you the before and after of just the HSL, this is the before, and this is the after. So we've got this nice red matte look coming through, but we've still got the greens, they're just a little bit darker, and we brought up the brightness found in the reds, yellows, and kind of oranges where predominantly the skin tones are found. So they're still nice and bright, but we're creating a slightly darker look in the surrounding with all of the foliage, as well as a little bit of that brickwork. Okay, so what we're gonna do is turn off HSL color, 
I'm going to drop down to color grading. Now, color grading, or what it used to be called split toning, is a great way of adding in colors to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And it's a great way of adding in certain colors, certain hues, and also the saturation of each one of those shadows, midtones, and highlights. Great way of color grading the photo, really. Hence why it's called color grading. So, what we're going to do drop over to the shadows first, and we're going to go ahead and add in a nice warm tone. So we're going to go for 35 in the hue, and then what you want to do is go to the saturation slider and increase that. Predominantly looking at the shadows, because that's what's it affecting, let's go for an effect of around about 15 saturation there. Then what we could do is go to the mid-tones here, and we're going to go ahead and add in a slightly warmer look, because the mid-tones are found predominantly in the skin tones. So let's go for more of a yellowish look, so more of a, a hue of 50, I would say, as you can see where it's found within the colour wheel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the saturation, but not by much this time. I'm going to go for around about 10, so a more of a subtle look. And then what we're going to do in the highlights, the product, if you're shooting with a wedding dress, so in this example, you don't want the wedding dress to look off-white. We want it to look pure white. Now, the problem at the moment, we've introduced a lot of warmer tones to it, and in the highlights, it's also impacting. So what can we do to reduce yellow? Well, if you look at your colour wheel, as you can see this photo here, you can see that blue is the opposite of yellow. So if you want to decrease a certain colour, increase its opposite colour, and that will bring it back more to a central point. If you know much about science, you know about alkaline and acid, if you want to neutralise an acid, you add an alkaline because it balances it out and neutralises it. And it's very similar with colour. It's treated very similarly. So if you've got a blue and you want to neutralise that blue, add in yellow, it will bring it back more to the correct white. And that's what we're going to do in this example. So we've got our highlights here. What we're going to do is bring it down to more of a blue. So you look at where the yellow is, kind of trace a line from one side to the other. So you want to go for here. I find 235 is a great opposite of yellow. Then go to your saturation and start adding that in. Now you don't want to go for too strong of an effect. So I'm going to go for around 10 in this specific example. Then to blend it a little bit more smoothly into the midtones, we're going to go for our highlights. We're going to select blending here. And we're going to increase that to 70. So we're going to go for an effect that looks similar to this. So if I turn just the colour grading effect, if I do the before and after, you can see we've added a nice warmer tone to it. It's subtle, but it is definitely there and really aids for this colour grading look. Okay, so we're going to turn off that. We're going to drop down to lens correction. If you're shot in RAW, you want to make sure that you've got remove chromatic aberration turn on, as well as enable profile corrections. Again, all lenses has certain optical problems, and turning this on will fix most of those problems when it comes to chromatic aberration or colour fringing, and as well as vignetting and distortion. And as you can see in this particular example, I shot it on my Sigma 35mm f1.4 art. Okay, so turn off lens correction, make sure that's all done. Then what we're going to do is drop down to effects. Now in this example, because they are central within the frame. I'm going to add in a small amount of vignette around the outside to really emphasize the couple in the foreground. So I'm going to go to my amount slider here and I'm going to decrease it adding in a vignette and I'm going to add in a vignette strength of minus 15 and I'm just going to leave the rest alone in this example. Okay and the last thing we'll do is going to go over to calibration. Now calibration is an incredibly powerful tool. If you want to learn more I've got my masterclass video here. It goes into great depth of what the calibration does Basically, it controls your three primary colors and how it interacts with all of it globally. So it's very similar to HSL, but it's a global change and it creates a little bit more of um, more of a, a professional look, I think. And it, it works really, really well, especially when color grading in small, subtle ways. So what we're going to do so we're going to go to the hue here, and what we're going to do is we're going to drop this down by minus five. So we're dropping down the reds ever so slightly when it comes to the saturation. In the green primaries, although, we're going to go to the hue of the green primaries, and we're going to increase that by 20, and we're going to increase the saturation by 10. Now, again, what this will do is if I go for more of an extreme look, you can see it's bringing out a lot of that red as well as the green. And if I decrease it, you can see it's bringing more of that yellow found. So you can balance the colors using the hue primary found in both red, green, and blue. So what we're gonna do is, what did I number? I think I chose 20 for that example. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the hue of blue, and then we're gonna go ahead and decrease it. So we go for minus 10, and in the saturation, we're doing something very similar. We're gonna go for plus five. And if I do just the before and after of that, if I do the before, 
And after, you can see we've brought a lot more of that red found in that brickwork. And we've kind of fixed the skin tones, bringing them a little bit more, kind of more of a pinkish hue, more, more natural, I would say. So that was the before and that was after. Again, very subtle, but definitely aids to the overall look of the photo. And there we go, guys. So what I can do is show you the before, and then show you the after. And I can show you it side by side as well. So if I go ahead and zoom in, you can see how much it has aided the skin tones and also the background. If I go ahead over to the, the kind of trees over here, you can really see how well it has worked. I must say, I really, really like the colors. So yeah, if you particularly like this color grading effect, make sure to write it down in the comments below. Here is the before and here is the after. Well, thank you guys for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. Now, if you'd like to learn any more about Lightroom Classic, I've got my Masterclass playlist series just here. Or if you're more interested in just learning about color grading, I've got my other playlist you can find just here. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.